Hey everyone, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is Season, season five, 5 of Pero Let, Let Me Tell You. Now, this guest, I could sit here and list all of the things she's been in, starting from Cleopatra 2525 to, you know, 911 Lone Star. But I'm going to use a little bit of shorthand and say that for listeners of our show, they know this was DJ's number one dream guest from the minute we started this podcast five years ago. (laughs) And you will probably hear him giggle a lot during this interview (laughs) as a result of that, (laughs) his little nervous, happy giggle. We have with us the one, the only, the incomparable, the beautiful, the talented, the fantastic Gina Torres. Thank you so much for joining us. Hola. Hola a todos. Thank you. Thank you so much for for having me. So Gina, as Ish said, I... I when we started our podcast, um, we're on a fifth season, so we started in 2018. You know, we had a, a a a list of guests, of dream guests that we wanted on the show, and you know, it was it was like, who's gonna be on our podcast? We're just two guys from Miami, two Cuban American guys from Miami. Like, what what like celebrity? Like, not even a Z lister is gonna be on our podcast. And you you were number one on my list because I'm a huge fan, and you embody everything that we look up to in people and celebrities and your Kuanida. <laughs> so you, <laughs> I, the fact that you are on our podcast, it's like dreams come true. <laughs> so yes, you, they do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. What an introduction. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, feel free to, feel free to use it. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> next time you, I'm just going to run it on a loop. <laughs> that's what I need. Yeah. All right. So, so Gina, I mean, you know, you, you've been, you've been in the industry for, for a minute now. I mean, I know, again, I mentioned, I think the first thing I ever noticed you on Cleopatra 2525, which tidbit guys, I think she also sang the theme song for that. Um, no, no? or was that? No. Okay. So Wikipedia is wrong. No, that's, that never that's happens. Some urban legend. That never happens. That, that never happens. Wikipedia is never wrong. How did I get that one wrong? <laughs> but you know, as, as a fellow Cuban American, you know, the, the thing we always ask, you know, persons like yourself is growing up, obviously, with Cuban parents. We we have them too. We know what they're like. Yes. What was it like at that moment when, you know, you kind of sat them down and said, you know what, guys? Voy a ser una actriz. I'm going into the arts, you know. <laughs> what? Because we find that that's a very nice common ground we all have for certain things where it's like, no, no. You're going to go study, as we say on the show, va a estudiar business administration and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and get your degree and all that. So, I mean, how did that come about? And, you know, the love for acting, where did it start? Oh, the shame. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shame. Um, it, it was always in me. You know, it was always in me. And, and here's the thing about Cuban parents, right? They love for you to perform for all the aunties and all the uncles and all the tios, y fulana, y ciclana, y cualquier. Oh, mira, mira como ella, mira como ella hace el personaje de Iris Chacón. Oh, mira como ella. They love for you to perform for them. But when you actually, like, want to make money doing it and it's part of your life, it's like, como? <laughs> And that's what I got. That's what I got from, you know, my dad, which was very, he, you know, he said, you're the smartest of all my children. You're the one who should be, be, you know, who should be a doctor. You're the one who, at, at the very least, a nurse. You just need two years. Mira, dos años. Dos años de la universidad y puede ser enfermera. Dos años se van así. Dos años pasan en nada. So, yeah, it was the shame. I mean, all actresses and entertainers, as much as we enjoy them <laughs> and watching them, <laughs> they're all whores. <laughs> They're all whores and drug addicts. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. My daughter's not a whore or a drug addict. And, or she will become a whore and a drug addict. Right. That's the fear. That's the fear. Right. right. It's a hangout yes. in Hollywood. That, it's a hangout. Yeah. It's a hangout. So having, um, you know, zero um, 
uh, accessibility, right? Yeah. Because I mean, that's the thing we always talk about, which I'm sure we'll get into, you know, later. It's it's when you are of a marginalized group, mm -hmm. um, you know, reach and accessibility and 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 things that you can, you know, people that can actually open doors for you. It's like, where does that even? Where do you even begin? Like, where right. does that even start? Right. And um, so here I was with this huge dream in the South Bronx um, with absolutely zero understanding of what it would take to, to get, you know, walk that path. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. um, and the first, the first path was going to LaGuardia High School. Oh, you went to, that's the Fame High School, right? Yes. Oh, okay. How many cars did yes, you dance on did. top of? I got to, you know, it's <laughs> um, no cars, but there were a couple of tables. Okay. I'll take involved. it. And, um, and I was a, a vocal major. So there were quite a few times when we were on the IRT, my classmates and I, on, you know, on the train after school, we would completely take over a yeah. train car and practice whatever choral piece we learned that day. So you heard so that yeah, you heard it here first, guys. Gina Torres was the originator of It's Showtime on the subway of New York. <laughs> so I, I, I heard por ahí that one of the first roles you uh, auditioned for was Dina on Dreams Girl on Dreamgirls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That was my first professional job. Wow. Was Dina on Dreamgirls. Um, I was 19, about to turn 20. Um and it was for a musical, um, it was for a, a dinner theater where you would bring your own dinner. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that still exists. It still exists. It's, it's in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's still there, called the Downtown Cabaret. And um, uh, it helped me get my, my equity card. And it was one of those, okay, so I'm a tall woman. And uh, I was about 5'10", pretty much around by the time I was 12, oh, wow. 13. And so at that age, when all girls are kind of starting to learn how to, you know, walk in, in high heels or some kind of a heel, my mom grounded me. <laughs> she completely grounded me because she didn't want me to be any more of a freak than I already was. She didn't want me to be any taller than I already was. She didn't want, you know, it was just like, mm -mm. so here I am all these years later auditioning for one of the most glamorous yeah. women on stage, like characters on the stage, right? Based on Diana Ross, based on all the social. And I had to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I said, ah, I, like, I like 1920. You at 1920, how to not just walk in high heels, but dance in high heels and step in touch in high heels and pretend like it was the most natural and go up and down the stairs and step, touch, step, touch and jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Yeah. So that was like baptism by fire um, and costume changes and like the whole thing. But it was, God, I was so happy. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I mean, that's, that's so a happy. great... That's a great first role, like first yeah. professional role. So, I mean, yeah. obviously, anybody that talks about the Gina Torres, you know, um, trajectory has to talk about, you know, sci-fi. You you are an icon in in the sci-fi world, yep. and and from Angel I, to Firefly. And I guess it was that coincidental, or was that a conscious decision that you made to go that route? Uh, no, that was that was completely coincidental. That was um, necessary. <laughs> was. They were the only people that would hire me. <laughs> you know, um, you know, they say don't meet your idols, but man, she's amazing. She's even better. <laughs> but no, it's a true story. Listen. I, I have this um, this incredible super fan who has been um, uh, editing like these edits right on on Instagram and she's then she posts them and she goes deep into the vault and finds things that I haven't seen in years and I bring this up because it absolutely has to do with your question um, 
she today, or it could have been yesterday, she posted um, an edit of a very, of a movie called Fair Game that I did like in oh, 20 years ago, basically. And I saw it and I got weepy because it was my first and only leading lady role. I, I'm like, I'm standing in my kitchen and I'm, I'm telling my boyfriend this and I'm starting to get all weepy and, be, and I said, I was the girl. I got to be the girl for the first and last time. <laughs> in, in like that rom-com right. girl that we all sort of grow up, you know, wanting to be and thinking, this is it. This is going to be, you know, this is going to be a beautiful thing. The world is going to see me as this girl and Boom, I'm going to be the Afro-Latina, Julia Roberts, um, Sandra Bullock, here, here we come. And, you know, nobody ever saw it, and so that didn't happen. <laughs> My point being that um, I couldn't make a living being that girl. Nobody would hire me to be that girl. But some beautiful big brains in the world did say, there's our assassin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, There's our space cowgirl. Well. <laughs> There's our, you know, emasculating kick-ass lawyer lady. <laughs> I, I, as far as leading lady, I'm going to respectfully disagree. And we'll talk about suits at the end. Because yes. to me, you were the leading lady. <laughs> this was Gina, This was Jessica Pearson's world and everybody else lived in it. But we'll get to that. We're leaving suits to the end because I'm a suitor. Yes. I'm, I'm yes. a suitor. I'm a super fan. Okay. And I was telling you, if we start talking about suits, it's just going to be the suits interview. And <laughs> Gina has so many other things. She has, um, you know, she's there's, Tommy Vega now. Like, look, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Pearson yeah, poster. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> poster. So that, that's going to be the, the end. That's going to be the end chapter. So okay. uh, I'm glad you mentioned, you know, uh, being Afro Latina, because yeah. one of the things that in our podcast, we've, we've, you know, in 190 some episodes that we have, we've tried to have a lot of, you know, because we're two Cuban guys, but we're white. So there's only so much we could bring to the table and we don't want to take the space of other people. And we've had a lot you of plenty. <laughs> you plenty. Um. Thank That's you. the pull quote moving forward. Thank whenever you. any Gina Torres says yes. we bring plenty, but thank you. <laughs> but we, we, you know, we've especially wanted to amplify, you know, Afro Latino voices, and you know, something that I've always seen in interviews that you've said is that you know, obviously, you can present African American, but you are Afro Latina, and for a long time, these were the roles that you would get, and and that's fine. But you are Afro Latina, and you've been one of those pioneers in that. How do you see any progress that has been made um, with Afro Latinas? Because I know that Afro Latina, uh, your in your current uh, character, um, uh, Tommy Vega, that's something that has been introduced with with her and her family life and her background. So, ha have you seen some progress, and and where are we going with that? Oh God, I, I hope we're we're going with bigger, better, more. Thank you very much. Um, I uh, yes, everything that you just said. <laughs> um, uh, Ariana DeVos. I mean, oh my God, how can we love her anymore? I mean, <laughs> I don't even know how. Like, <laughs> I, I I just want to grab her. I just want to grab her and let you know. It's just like that old Bugs Bunny cartoon. I'm like, love her and kiss yes. her and. Hold her and call her George. I just, I just adore her and everything. And, and, and I adore Steven Spielberg for making the choice, you know, for choosing her, you know, again, none, none of these things happen in a vacuum. None of, they can't. We, we, we have to continue to educate and, and, and create and talk about each other and, and our experiences and who we are and broaden everybody's understanding and perspective of what Latinidad is, mm -hmm. um, what Hispaniolidad is, like the whole shebang. It is not a monolith. There is no culture that is, we are, you know, we all talk about a new world order or, or you know, or new global understanding of things. Since ships and canoes <laughs> were built, 
<laughs> we have been crossing lines and cultures and seeing each other and meeting each other and, and mingling and intermingling. Um, whether it was uh, war, conquering, love, it, it just, this is who we are. And we are a product of all of those things. Um, and so it makes me extremely happy and giddy. Just just watch, just turning on a freaking coffee commercial right. and seeing a biracial couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When have we ever seen that? I, you know, in all the years that I've been alive, that's it's now becoming more mainstream, and I that's what I want Afro Latinidad to become, not the strange bird in the corner that we don't really talk about, but as a part of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that's always what I've 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 tried to do. Not not so much. Um, that my, you know, I've always said, of course, the roles that I've played and the roles that I've gotten over the years weren't necessarily Latina. They weren't Afro-Latina. They were written black. They were, you know, but I knew who I was. Right. Just so happened that an Afro-Latina was playing this part. Whatever you projected onto her, whatever you saw in her that was familiar to you, that was soothing or interesting, just know that an Afro Latina was playing that part. <laughs> we, we had um, a, a couple of weeks ago or last month, we had Amarada Negra on the show, and she was a. Oh, player. yeah. And um, she talks, she said something very similar to that that, you know, it, we're not a monolith, and that, you know, it, it, you can't put somebody in a box, that you're so much more than a box and a label. And those sounds like, those sound like very rudimentary things like, oh yeah, doesn't everybody know that? But when it comes down to it in terms of, as you said, parts and roles, those parts and roles for a long time were not there. And and it was very one dimensional. So it, again, it, it's great to see that in in um with with your current character with Tommy Vega, like that you've been able, they've been able to introduce that about her um, in the show. And how much of that was was written, and how much of that was what you know what what you? I mean, obviously, you as the as the actor in the role bring that character to life. But was that already going to be an element of her character, or was it something that you showed up and you're like, you know, I got an idea? Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. I was talking to the uh, to the creator to my near. Uh, who's the reason why, you know, I have the job at all, who I, I've worked with him on Firefly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and he offered me this part and, uh, and I, you know, I said, yes. And, 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 um, and then about a week later I said, and here's the thing, <laughs> by, the <way. laughs> by the way, I, I really need her to be Afro Latina. And he said, okay, absolutely. Great. Tell me what that means. <laughs> that's great that's great that he wanted that's, to yes it. yeah yes he wanted it to be authentic he needed it to he needed to hear from me he wanted to be able to to you know relate that to his writers um and when i walked on to set to the house to the set that is my my house my home and i walked into the kitchen oh Girl, did I forget to turn off the... <laughs> <laughs> we heard a ding. <laughs> Do not disturb. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's okay. We're among friends here. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so, uh, yes, I walk onto the set. Um, that is my home. That is the Vega house. And in the kitchen, I, because my, my late husband played a, a chef and a cook, there is a chalkboard menu that looks like it, it came like straight off of a wall, like of some like greasy spoon in, in Little Havana. And it's all Cuban food. Nice. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, I'm it's gonna look for just, it now. Yeah. Like it's it's huge. And I just walked in and I just they heard me. <laughs> like they got it. It wasn't like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Well just it's it's no, this is yeah. this is her. This is what she would have in, in her, and this is what her husband would, you know, would have for her. And so it it's those little things that are so important. Um 
when we're talking about representation. Yeah. And it is, it is in the details. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, again, it shows that they, because many times the writer's rooms don't have the degree of diversity that we would like, right? Like as much as God bless them, they try, right? It's just, yeah. it's, it's just not caught up yet. But yeah. they listened to you and they didn't just kind of go like, well, Afro-Latina, I don't know. Have her say I'm going to Fiesta once in a while and we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day, you know, like, because that's not it, you and, know? And say, say, wow, this is very caliente. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> right. Throw some Spanish in there. Yeah, just, I don't know. But say, have her say hola when she walks in and that's it. We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they took it that extra step and that was because they allowed you to have input. And it makes all the sense in the world if you're playing this character. I mean, you know yeah. her better than anyone else, right? So of course. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's also, it's doubly important for me too, because in Hollywood, when one thinks specifically Latino, here it's it's Mexican. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like they say, you know, alas del mismo pájaro, sí. right? It's like, it's, yes, the, the, we do have a very, we're, we have a language. But culturally, they're little, there's little this, and then there's little that, and then this changes, and this, you know, like Mexican tamales are very different from Cuban tamales. Mm -hmm. yeah. And nobody ever hears about Puerto Rican pasteles. Right. Right. <laughs> nobody ever hears about, you know what I mean? So the more we open up, and again, South America is different from the Caribbean. Yeah. And so I, I it, we're in Texas. So naturally, you'd think, oh, well, we're going to hear more about like Mexican culture. And yes, that's a huge part of, of Texas. But to now put a Cuban in Texas. <laughs> right. It's just like, let's just let's just do something else. Let's just let's just, you know, show the differences. Yeah. And, of our culture that are equally beautiful and, and, and equally wonderful. And by the way, congratulations for 9-11 Lone Star. That season two finale, I mean, not going to lie, it was, it had me at the edge of my seat and I was like, what? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I have to admit, see, because I'm such a fan of yours that anything you're in, I'm going to watch. Like, I watched that one episode of Claws you were in. <laughs> like, that you were yeah. starting. <laughs> because she was phenomenal in yeah. it. That's right. why. Like, like... Tori, you know, there's certain people that's like, anything they do, okay, I'm watching, you know. So I did come on board. I'll, I'll you know, full confession. Uh, I did come on board when you came on, on the show. Sorry, Rob Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. We love Rob Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> that's where she, she started on season two as well, so it's fine. I did <laughs> Absolutely. We love Rob Lowe, but I love Gina Torres more than Rob. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, so tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit. I mean, you already talked about when you got casted and all that. But I mean, the filming for that show must be really intense. This is like a lot more physical than Suits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Different. Yes. <laughs> it was, was, was physical in a different way yeah. um, with my feet. And stilettos, but that's a, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, you know, it's been lovely coming on to to Lone Star because in, in a lot of ways it was sort of coming full circle back into an action uh, based genre because that's how I started. I did I did action for ten years between Cleopatra twenty five twenty five and Firefly and Alias and you know there was always element of me throwing my body around um so i love the quickness with which we work in tv i love that sort of that that kinetic um pace which is uh which is i think exciting and it translates to the audiences because we you know when we're doing rescues it feels like it's it's real time and it, it's got to get done um but what's so beautiful about lone star is you spend so much time with the characters that you're invested in them. You're invested in their lives. And so when they get to show off this ridiculous skill set in these ridiculous circumstances, you're that much more engaged in what's, in what's happening. Um, and I, I have to say, full disclosure, it's not something that I expected at all. You know, you think of broadcast TV, you think that they, you know, they have to check off a certain number of boxes. Um, it's a great paycheck. 
I'm going to be working at home. You know, all of these things as you reach a certain age, when you have a family, when you have responsibilities, you know, you kind of look for all of these things. Um, and, and you hope and you pray that you can be soulfully, creatively fulfilled. And I'm so happy to be able to say that I am for all of those reasons. The diversity on the show is incredible. Um, the storytelling is, is incredible. Um, and we have a great time. We have a great, talented cast. I mean, I know when I see the show and I mean, I know, obviously, you have a background of, you know, kicking ass and being a superhero. Um, but I'm like, wow, this is like a very physical show. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. these people must be exhausted by, at the end of, you know, uh, when they finish filming, because I mean, I'm sure you do a ton of takes and all that. Um, yes. Yeah. But um, so, so we've come to the have point we reached that point of the interview? The point all right. That, where, the, the, OK, <laughs> so I have to tell you about why I have. Have. I'm gonna try to keep him on a leash, Gina. The I promise. On DVD, mind you, suits is on streaming. Um, and why it's all on my DVD? Because since we live in Florida, there's a lot of hurricanes here, and we lose power a lot. So I've always said, if there's a hurricane and we lose like cable, sir, like streaming Wi-Fi, I have the, the, the whole series of suits on on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> No puedo contigo. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> Gina, Gina, you don't understand. Like in 195 episodes, I'm constantly referencing suits. So that's true. Because I, I actually am a lawyer by trade. So, ah, okay. so, so, so I started watching suits when right off the bat. And, and again, it's not because you're my dream guest or you're on, you know, you're, we're interviewing you right now. The moment I saw you in the pilot, I mean, I knew who you were, obviously, from you know, the Matrix and everything else you had done. But I was like, oh, I I, I love her. <laughs> like, I love Jessica Wilson. <laughs> like, and then, you know, as the show progressed and your character just kicked more and more ass, that's why I said I ref respectfully disagree. Because to me, so you were, I, I know it was all about Harvey and Mike, but you were the kick-ass character in Suits. This guy right here can attest to it. Yeah. When when I would watch the show in first run, all of Jessica Pearson suits, I'd be like uh, scenes. I'd be like pause, rewind, <laughs> because <laughs> scenes were so epic. So let's. I, I wanted to ask you, how did suits? How did you even get um, you know involved in suits? How you know the character? Uh, did you have any type of input in that development? How did that all start? Um, the way any, any good job starts it, with an audition. <laughs> and I had, um, I had auditioned for another show, um, for USA Network, uh, like a couple, a few weeks prior, um, that I did not get. It was, I think it was for COVID, I think it was COVID Affairs, but I, I had gone to the wire on that wasn't right for that. They chose somebody else. Suits came up. By that time, all the executives were familiar with my work. Um, so they decided to bring me in. They were having a hard time casting this character. And part of the reason was, you know, she, she was written as um, a white 60 year old male. Um, and then, and then they decided, oh, well, you know, we're kind of heavy on men. Uh, let's do the right thing and make it, uh, you know, a white 60 year old woman. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. Di diversity really. Yes, diversity. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and, and then someone, uh, which I believe was probably Stephen O'Neill, who, who's the head of casting out there said, well, you know, we just read Gina Torres. And um, and bring her in. I mean, she's she's much younger than you uh, would want her to be, or, or as she's written. But I think she has the stuff to make this work. So I, I came in. They wanted to meet with me, and that went very well. And uh, and then I and then I you know jumped through all the flaming hoops <laughs> to get to the job again, um, and I got the part. As to your question about um, how much input I had in it, I was the one wearing the stilettos. 
I mean, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the one that says the words that shows up and that's what I did. I don't believe for a second that they knew who this character would become mm -hmm. embodied by me. Right. And that's what that. So, no, I mean, there was no way. <laughs> there was no way. Um, and, and I just brought all of, you know, every assassin I ever played. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I became the woman that I believed needed, uh, I needed to be to run that firm. Yeah. And I had to be completely unapologetic about it because the world was seeing a formidable black woman yeah. run the lives of a bunch of white men yeah yeah and they had to and they had to love her for it what i thought was so yes. genius about the way jessica pearson was written that's why i asked about your input in it because i had a hunch that y this was you at the table like bringing this to the table was that jessica pearson was unapologetically you know who she was like this is what it is but she you know i hate to say the word she wasn't a bitch you know she was fair she was fair and so yeah. often they go in that direction that the woman in charge is the what is it the h uh HBIC. HBIC. Yeah. um they, yeah. they, they go that direction and jessica pearson i mean you you feared her a little bit but she was also fair and she was you know human and she there was there was dimensions you know she was multi-dimensional and i thought that was perfectly written perfectly written thank you yeah no they, they they did a great job with that i think there was always um in playing her there you know there's there's always that opportunity right to be hard yeah. to be when you're when you're when you read the scripts and you're just reading the words there there are so many different ways to skin a cat and it it was really a very conscious effort certainly on my part to keep her calm, right? To keep her um, the smartest person in the room, and you can't be the smartest person in the room unless unless you see, you know. I mean, there were always, always so many references to her being, you know, a, a genius chess player, right? A three D chess player, and that's really how I I saw it. She was she didn't have time for the petty, yeah, of it. She was she was so far ahead of everybody else in in trying to just get it done and what had to be done and moving those pieces around, um, and I loved that about her. I loved playing that about her, and it, it's also something that um, uh, that I when someone asked advice, it's it's pick your battles. She was genius at picking her battles. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, th now that you said that, that she kept calm. In that episode, uh, This Is Rome, when Lewis finds out about Mike, <laughs> and, then you, and Jessica's like, you want to see me squirm. Well, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. <laughs> that was so Jessica. So you just better tell me what you want. It's like, it's so, it's like, steady hand. So, funny story. So, obviously, as I said before, I obviously knew who Gina Torres was, but I didn't know a lot about your, you know, your personal life. And it was in the third season that you're talking to the character of Jeff Malone that you're like, oh, did you go to that little Cuban place where they have the ropa vieja? And I paused and I was like, <laughs> I was like not even Meryl Streep can pull off that accent. I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my God, Gina Torres is our people. She's Cuban. And that is how I discovered right. that Cuban. <laughs> The way you said ropa vieja in that episode, I was like, nope, nope, nope. She has to be, she has to be Cuban. So, um, yeah, I, I thought that was such an amazing, amazing show. But to me, you were the life of that show. And when you left, I was... I was torn apart. Like, I was like, I mean, I still kept watching the show because I was like, what, six, seven years invested at that point? Yeah. You know? 
but yeah. and then you know when 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 you came back with Pearson, I still have all of Pearson on my DVR. <laughs> like, oh, that was don't so update great. it. Don't update that damn DVR. You'll lose everything. <laughs> that was so <laughs> so so great that they 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 gave you the chance to you know make go more in depth with the character. How was that experience? I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I mourn a season two. <laughs> I mourn that show. There she is. Especially since season one ended in a cliffhanger. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> I'm, and a good one. And a good one, too. We had so many. We had already sketched out a second season. Um, it was, it, gosh, it was just one of those things where we got caught in the worst um, perfect storm. Yeah. And for a television show, it was, um, you know, cable such as it is and, and cable programming is now giving way to streaming. But the thing about cable programming is that it's, it's, it's not streaming. It's not broadcast. And we don't make broadcast numbers because they're streaming. <laughs> and broadcast doesn't even make broadcast numbers anymore because they're streaming. And, um, and Peacock still had not come online right. and there was no, there, so we were caught in sort of, people loved the show, um, but we didn't have, they didn't come out in the numbers to watch it live that, that we needed them to. And then there was no place to go because it was NBC Universal and they didn't have Peacock yet. And they were trying to end all their deals with. Everyone streaming, else. you know, with like Netflix. It was just this thing. And I just remember I got the call that they weren't going to, to pick it up. And here's the thing, right? When you get canceled, there's always like one poor bastard that like draws the short stick that has to make the call. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to make that call. I heard from every single executive from the very top all the way down about how much they loved the show, how it wasn't the show's fault, how, you know, how um, happy they were to have worked with me, like all, like all the things, it, like no one was hiding in a corner going, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> they, they knew that it was just as much as they tried, they couldn't make the, the numbers work on it. So, yeah. well, I mean, and, as, as a fan, that. as a fan of suits and of most importantly of Jessica Pearson, you know, obviously we would have loved to have seen more seasons, but you know, at least we got that. We got to see more about her. You know, one of, one of the things I really enjoyed about, about suits was that it appeared to me that all of you got along really well off camera um because that's always it's always so heartbreaking to hear when when you love a show and you find out the cast hates each other you know, I know. but I, I you know i would see so many like things that you would all do um about that and um it was great that how like well it seemed you all got along off camera i loved it i loved it i loved it that, yeah that, we that did was, we absolutely did i love that that uh, thing you guys did where you read you all got together and you read the 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 pilot episode script that was great oh yes that was great that yeah was great. that's right yeah we did that was <laughs> you know six seasons in <laughs> Let's give a refresher. <laughs> you go, oh, I remember this. <laughs> I remember. Gosh, you've come a long way. And the last thing I'll say about Jessica Pearson is that I remember, you know, during Suits heyday, they were always talking about, like, um, uh, Scandal with um, Olivia Pope and Carrie, Wa you know, the character Carrie Washington played. And they would always talk how great she was, you know, that she was a woman of color and how badass she was and all the, you know, door she was breaking and i'm like no i'm like olivia pope has nothing on jessica pearson <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> no offense to carrie washington we love carrie washington but, we love carrie but, yes. but jessica pearson is the biggest badass on television so <laughs> <laughs> you know the great thing about jessica was that she she was dependent on nobody it was, and, and that was sort of, it was, it was, what was equally frustrating and endearing about her. Like I would often joke that is, is she even real? Like, does she have family? Does she have, like, does she just, there's this door that led nowhere. 
in her office. And I just thought, maybe that's where her pot is. She just <laughs> plugs in. She plugs in there at the end of the day. Um, and it was just so beautiful to open her up in, uh, on Pearson so that you said, well, she doesn't plug in at, in the pod at the end of the day. She actually has a life. She has, you know, an interior life. She has an emotional life and it runs deep. I love it. It's the last, it's the last thing I'll say about Jessica Pearson. You like a typical Cuban. Fan. He said the last thing was the I'm last thing fan. and now this is, is the last thing. Th some, some interview you did some years ago that they asked you, what's Jessica Pearson's go-to karaoke song? And you're like. Jessica Pearson doesn't do karaoke. She's <laughs> like, wonderful. I loved it. So, so let, let, let's move on because if not, you know, it's gonna go. I know she's got other things to do. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> This is great. I'm having a ball. Oh, that that war. That honestly, you don't know how awesome that is to hear. Um, you know, and again, we love you for so many reasons, but we also know that you you work with a lot of charities, and I know that you occasionally on my social media cameos for you will pop up and uh, <laughs> and and it's always like limited time you know you're you're the limited time offer of cameo which is fantastic because all of your cameos uh go to charities right um, yes and so is that as are we getting another round of cameos uh coming up soon i am i am back on cameo yes i am cameo dot com slash gina torres <laughs> <laughs> i think that's it um Yes, and and you know I'll I'll happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy belated St. Patty's Day. <laughs> you need a pep talk, I'm your girl. Um, and and every dime that I make goes to No Kid Hungry, and Save the Children. Wow, and I mean again, like like we don't love her already, like and then she's a she's you know she's philanthropy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we as I said, we we feel so proud that you know you've you're such a, a not only a great actress and a, and a great person and you know philanthropy, but that you've um, so unapologetically um, you know put the Cuban name out there, you know, and and it, it's so important to have people like you, you know, front and center and and you know representing us and and I just. Yeah, we're we're it, it's so weird because sometimes in this podcast we we interview people that are great that you know that are fantastic, but it's not every day that we interview people that we're like hardcore fans of. So <laughs> thank you so much, Gina. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Made my week. Thank you. <laughs> if you have thirty seconds, my son actually wants to come and say hi because when i told yes. him we were interviewing him he was like the lady you watch on the show i'm like yes <laughs> so let me go get him really quick <laughs> bring him on bring him on yeah uh, I lindo. yeah gina thank you so much this has been i mean like I, and i always tell i, I always actually lord it over him because many moons ago when suit season one started you did a a press tour for latin america that came I sure did. you did one here in miami and I was yes. at that event, and I actually got the chance to meet you. And I have a picture with you that I don't know where the hell that picture went, but we have <laughs> a hey, picture hi. together. It's, and so, well, this is Tristan. It's Jessica. Just speaking to the mic. From Suits. <laughs> hi, Tristan. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. How old are you? What? How old are you? How old are you? Eight. Eight. You're a big for eight. You are tall. Thanks. So tell me, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. How often does your dad torture you, making you watch me on TV? Well, he doesn't. But how, <laughs> how often does he watch Suits? It's true. A lot, huh? I don't know the exact. I, well, you I, you used to even know the theme song. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I did. I just, I <laughs> so, thank you. She just wanted to say hi. Yeah. Nice thank to meet you. you. Bye. <laughs> nice to meet you too <laughs> thank you so much for doing that <laughs> of course he was so excited he was so excited I gotta keep my fan base young yeah. <laughs> <There> you, go. <laughs> yeah. you gotta keep them going I like rolling them in just <laughs> away I love it I love it like <laughs> <laughs> so, Gina, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. You, as I said, you were number one on our dream list. Like, I was like, Gina Torres, I want her on the show. It's never going to happen, but I want her on the show. <laughs> so, of course it's not. I can't, I can't believe I've missed so many seasons. So, 
Well, well you, you can catch up. You can catch up. You can catch up. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Between yes. scenes, and I'll talk, when I have something else to talk about, I'll come on. Is that a deal? I, listen, we're, 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 we've got it on tape, so, so I, it's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, All right, sounds okay. good. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank, Thank you. Have a great week. Un beso. Muchísimas gracias. Bye. 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 Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. <laughs>